Help me with that. Maybe that's not going to work. Yes. Two viewers. Well, I can't see the viewers. It's a good chat box.
Okay, I, I can't tell if you guys can hear me. Um, I was just trying to wait. I don't see you. So I'm assuming that you don't have um, a, a webcam. I can't see that anybody. I can see that we have one viewer. And um, on the side, there should be a chat box. Or on your left, it should say chat. If you will click that, then it should open a chat box. And you can type. <clears throat> um, so if you can hear me since this is the first time we're doing this I'm trying to wait to see if I can at least have some evidence that somebody can hear me or see me before I begin <clears throat> On the left side of my screen, it says chat. If you click that, it should open the a chat box on your right. <laughs> Thank you, Gracie. If you see me, I'm confused. I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me. So, um, trying to add you. Okay, good. Got you added on to my account. Thank you for participating. I see Lyndon is trying to get in. All right, Lyndon, I'm adding you if you can hear me. Okay, you should be able to um, be viewing. I have four viewers, so I know at least I have Gracie and Lyndon. We lost somebody and maybe Jamel. So I'm going to go ahead and um, hopefully you can hear me. If my intention was you would be able to ask questions. Um, there should be a chat box on your left hand side so if um, there should be a, a menu let me um, screen share with you so you can see what it is that I'm seeing so you can look for it if you can hear me I'm gonna screen share and you'll see me 800 times I know you've been looking forward to that all week Okay, so now that's why it looks like infinity, because you're looking ooh, at my screen, looking at my screen, looking at my screen, looking at my screen. But you can see here on the left-hand side, it should say chat, screen share, capture. You'll have these features too when you, um, when you host your own or you connect with somebody so on the side here where you see chat if you click that um, it should have a feature on the bottom right hand corner over here where you should be able to type and as you type it will appear here under group chat So if you can type in there, then I can see your comments and give immediate feedback. Um, but I'm seeing that nobody probably has a webcam. No one has a microphone. 
on the top of your screen, um, trying to figure out which one is the one you're seeing, on the top of the screen right here does give you the option to, uh, to speak. If you can click the microphone feature here, then you should be able to, um, to talk. If you have um, a speaker or a microphone attached to your laptop, or if you have one attached to um, that came with your your iPod, iPhone, whatnot. This button here um, allows you to turn your webcam on and off if you have one. This would affect your settings. Settings here, maybe you can go into these settings. And um, it will allow you to set up whether you have a microphone or if you have um, a webcam, you can set it up here. Play test sound. So that will allow you to determine whether or not your speakers are working properly, your voice, and save your settings. Okay, so I'm going to close that. And there we go into infinity again. So see if you can find somewhere to um, to chat, as in here. And I'm going to go ahead and take off screen sh screen share. Okay. So I don't even know if you can hear me. So I'm going to go ahead and put on like a little PowerPoint. And um, it's going to go over some questions that you definitely should consider. If you can hear me, great. I hope you can hear me. I'm sorry that was the intention. Um, and um, oh, it's backwards even, so that doesn't work. Is that say is that right? Okay, so I'm gonna go and put the PowerPoint on. Maybe I'm talking to myself. That's typical. I'm used to that. So let's go ahead and proceed. Um, I'm sorry that you can't give feedback or figure out a way to chat. Maybe you can investigate this this weekend. And um, Gracie and Lyndon and Jamel and whoever else is out there, if you can. Um, see each other on there, you can add each other so you can call each other maybe over the weekend and test it out. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share and put up the PowerPoint that I, pre that I uh, created to review with you and I'll go through it quickly since you can't hear me. If you'd like, you're welcome to write down the questions. Um, again, there are things to think about and things that you need to be prepared to be able to do tomorrow. So thanks again for trying to be here. I can't see you anyway. So. All right, here we go. All right, so you should be able to hear me, and this is going to be our little review. First, you need to make sure that you are comfortable with measurement. Uh, we talked about this week the difference between mass, volume, density, and temperature. Make sure you know the definition for each, as if it were a question giving you the definition, asking you what is this measuring, or if, um, or if I said um, I'm measuring how much matter is in my car, what am I measuring, you should know that that's mass. Make sure that you know what unit you use when you measure each of those, as well as what tool. Um, if you participated with your group well over the last two days during the measurement lab, you should be able um, to answer those questions. But look at the definitions for each of these um, in your notes, in the PowerPoint notes that we completed together. Um, I believe that was Tuesday. Okay, so please take a look at those so that way you can be prepared for the measurement. Also, make sure you know what measurement system we use in science. We don't use the English system, right? We don't use inches or pounds or miles, but we use SI, which is the international system, but what do you call it? 
I know you're all screaming the metric system because you're that brilliant. So um, that is the right answer. Make sure you know that. And again, tomorrow there are a few questions where you're going to have to calculate um, the volume of something, the density of something, and one other question. So bring a calculator. If you have a calculator, you can use your calculator. If you don't have a calculator, you got to do math. So math and science, they go together. But uh, again, I'd like to know that you know how to calculate those things, not that you know how to do multiplication and division. So I will allow it. And if, again, you're wondering, uh, can you use your phone? Yes, as long as it's on the desk and visible, so I know you're using it appropriately, that will be acceptable. Okay, so think about these questions if they were to appear in a similar manner on the test. Um, if I were measuring how much mass is in the elephant I just ate for supper, what tool would I be using? measuring his mass. So first I'm probably measuring how much matter is in this huge elephant. What tool would he fit on? <laughs> none, none in our classroom, right? Definitely not on my desk. Um, but we would attempt to put him on the triple beam balance. Okay, if you're measuring mass, you use a triple beam balance in our class. Maybe that was a bad example. <laughs> Miniature elephant, that's what it is. Okay. So if I said, I want to see how much space my brother's big head takes up in the mirror, because his ego, his head is like a million miles wide, what m units would I use to describe how much space his head takes up? Okay, that's kind of confusing. We used, first you have to ask yourself, what is that a measure of? How much space something takes up? If you said volume, you are exactly right. And we learned two different ways this week to measure volume. Now we could sink his head into um, a unit of water and then the displacement of the water in milliliters or liters would give us um, the volume of his big head. However, we probably wouldn't need to do that. We'll get in a lot of trouble, so I don't advise you to do that at home. Um, you could also take the length times the width times the height of his head and uh, multiply those for, and the product would be your volume. So again, the units would be millil milliliters, liters, or if we're taking length times width times height, because we're using the metric system, it would be probably centimeters cubed, right? Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is centimeters cubed. So hopefully you guys are understanding why we're using those units. All right, and lastly on measurement, if I wanted to see how packed the atoms are in an object, hence all of the things we floated or sank today, what formula would you use? We know that how packed the atoms are would be a measure of their density. So we have to actually calculate density because it's a measure of how much stuff we have in a certain amount of space. So that's mass divided by what? mass divided by volume. Hopefully you guys got that. Again, I'm looking at the same PowerPoint you can see right now if you can hear me and um, I cannot see any of your chat if you figured that out by now or I can't hear anyone so I'm assuming we have no microphone. So we'll continue again. It won't be the first time I'm talking to myself if that is the case. So hopefully this is helping. All right, next you need to make sure that you are familiar with our lab safety rules. We talked about this last week for a couple of days. And uh, please look through the list of lab safety rules that you agreed to follow. You guys um, talked about and we collaborated on what were the top 10 lab safety rules and your groups guessed to see if you could match what was up on my board. And uh, that, 10, that list of 10 rules that I asked you to write down um, it's going to ask a few questions about them. Typically in the book there are lab safety symbols that go along with it, but um, any questions that refer to symbols will also refer to rules, so I know you'll be familiar with that. Um, think about what do you think is the most important rule of our 10 lab safety rules? Could it be pulling your hair back or wearing safety equipment? Um, Maybe follow all lab safety rules would probably be a good one. 
be prepared for um, to answer this question whatever you think is the answer make sure you can explain why why do you think it's the most important rule um, and why do we follow lab safety rules okay um, make sure think about what are you expected to do at the end of every lab what have I been having you do for the last couple of weeks and probably what your parents want you to do at the end of each day or a week or whatever your schedule is at home what should you be doing after yourself okay of course you're old enough to clean up after yourself by now um, showing some responsibility means a little more independence at your age so should act responsibly and clean up after yourself at the end of each lab we're going to clean up our messes put up equipment return materials things like that okay so be prepared um, to talk about our procedures for labs as well and then lastly think about um, what we discussed as far as the lab safety rules and accidents what would you do if you spilled chemicals on yourself would you just uh, brush your hands on your pants and go about your day and move on to the next class maybe eat lunch put a piece of gum in your mouth with the chemicals on your hands of course not you wouldn't be with us much longer so we uh, hope that you would wash the chemicals off immediately we always want to um, use it utilize the sinks in the back of the room and uh, make sure to notify the teacher of accidents is the biggest thing right so it doesn't matter what accident it occurs please feel free to address me let me know what is happening so that I can help you get proper care um, we can clean up properly or in the last uh, case of the last question break an object glass or materials I want to be able to clean up after it or get you new materials so you can finish the lab I want I don't I want you to be safe during our labs I don't want you to become injured or be able to hurt somebody near you with something that's broken so please let me know so I can replace the materials clean up after you if necessary and um, get you the proper care as needed all right so here we go Next, we talked a little bit about bias and ethics. I would like you to make sure that you know the difference between each of those. I did have you to write down the definition. Um, if you want to, of course, any of these topics we're learning about, feel free to Google the topic or go to YouTube and um, Google the question, what's the difference between bias and ethics? I'm sure there are 100 people out there that would love to tell you their opinion. Um, and then, which one means prejudice? If somebody is prejudiced, they are considering other choices or their or favoritism in some case um, or characteristics that might want them to choose one way or another of a person um, or a experiment or a lab or results. So which one would be prejudice, bias or ethics? Okay, the answer there should be bias. Bias means that we're choosing really unethically we're choosing because of some prejudice or preference um, and we're not looking with an open mind we're not considering all the options so that leads me to the last question if two friends and my brother apply for a job that I'm hiring for I'm the boss I get to pick whoever I want and I decide to give the job to my brother because he's the best best man for the job do you think that's a violation of ethics or bias again you need to make sure you understand the difference between them now but ethics is being able to make the right decision okay instead of the wrong decision when you're faced with it so would hiring my brother be the right decision well if he's really the best man for the job it might not be a violation of ethics it might not be unethical to hire him but do you think it's biased? Do you think that I have some prejudice or favoritism in terms of wanting to hire my brother instead of two friends? I mean, I like all of them, right, if they're friends and my brother. In fact, I probably like my friends more than my brother sometimes because if you have any brothers, sometimes they can pick on us. And, you know, little brothers, hmm, that's another story. So anyway, um, 
I it would probably be a little biased um, if you did this as an adult it would probably be scrutinized which means people would question your ethics if you were acting responsibly and so it's probably not a good choice either way but make sure you can explain your opinion again this class is about what you think what you observe and if you can defend your answers so let's continue we are most definitely going to be covering the scientific method on our test tomorrow and so make sure that you can um, explain what it means in each of these steps. What does it mean to observe? What does it mean to experiment? What does it mean to a hypothesis? And what does it mean to conclude your experiment? And uh, what is included in each of those, excuse me, as well as maybe a basic definition in your words. And just like we did for our warm ups a few times, if I gave you an example, that you should be able to identify which step of the scientific method it would occur in. So, in the next question, it asks, which one do you ask a question? Do we ask a question when we conclude? Would I say, hmm, I think, I don't know, did I burn my dinner? Did I overcook my dinner? I wouldn't ask a question in the conclusion. By then, I should probably know if I burned my dinner or not. My family would know if I burned my dinner and um, my neighbors would probably know because my smoke alarm would go off. Most definitely. That's how we know when dinner's done around here. So, um, in which one do we ask a question? Of course, I'm sure you know it's the observe, the observation. We first have to identify there's a problem and then ask a question so we can, we can begin to solve it because we said, okay, we have lots of observations, okay, the wall was tan, the dog made a mess on the floor, um, the grass needs to be cut, but those are just observations. So it's not until we ask a question can we get, begin to find an answer. We answer questions, we don't answer statements. So what... Um, what can I do to get the grass to look better? Can I get my son to cut the grass? Um, what can I use to clean up the mess on the floor? These are observation questions. When we get to the end of our experiment, we need to make sure we clearly state our conclusion. But we talked about our conclusion should always um, tell us a couple things. So the question is, what should every conclusion include? Okay, I know I can't hear you, but I'm sure you're answering. It has to tell whether or not our hypothesis was right, okay, and it should tell the answer to our question or what we found out in our experiment, okay. Um, it meant, To answer the last question, does a conclusion always have to give the right answer? No. It should say that during our experiment, my hypothesis was right or my hypothesis was wrong. What I found was this. And, and again, refer back to the question, restate the question in another means so that your conclusion standing alone, if somebody reads it, they know whether or not you are right or wrong and what you were investigating and what you found. Okay? It doesn't have to be right. You might just state that this is, this is what I found to be the wrong answer or this is not the way to cook my dinner. This is not the materials I would use to clean the floor. Um, an example of that, when if I had asked in the beginning, what chemicals or materials can I use to clean this dog mess off the floor? And I went to the cupboard, made a hypothesis, found some nice smelling stuff, uh, took some things out from under the cupboard without reading them. If you choose the wrong chemical, in the end, you will find that that should not be what you use to clean the floor, especially if it includes bleach. So be very careful when um, taking on experiments like that at home. All right, so just a couple more questions to get you thinking about the scientific method um, and some questions some, that might be similar to some things that will be on the test tomorrow if there's anybody out there. So if I said that I believe that Melissa will be the fastest runner in our class, what part of the scientific method would that occur in? Observe, hypothesis, experiment, conclude. Again, I indicated to you in the week, you can always look and try to determine is it past, present, or future. It says Melissa will be the fastest runner in our class. So has the experiment occurred yet? She will be. 
it hasn't ex um, occurred yet because it, she will be if it was the end of the experiment it could say Melissa was the fastest runner in her class so since it says will be you're and you're probably right it should be the fa um, hypothesis she will be the fastest runner in our class if I asked you who do you think will be the fastest runner Melissa will be, I I believe that Melissa will be the fastest runner in our class. That, of course, is a clear hypothesis stating what you are measuring and who you think is going to win. All right, if you complete your experiment and find out that your hypothesis is wrong, what should you do? You should just be honest and say, my hypothesis was wrong. If we had time, you can go back, come up with a new hypothesis, conduct a new experiment to try to get the right conclusion. Um, that's what a scientist would do. In our class, again, I want you to make sure that you feel comfortable just stating, my hypothesis was wrong, this is not the way that this occurs, and tell us what you did find in your experiment. Okay? Now we talked about in our experiments that we would collect a different couple or a couple kinds of data. Okay, we're going to be making observations throughout our experiments. Again, good scientists write things down, and then um, we analyze our data before we draw conclusions. So sometimes we have numerical data, and sometimes we have non-numerical data like um, colors and shapes and. Um, Again, Melissa being the fastest runner, unless you were calculating her speed, just her name, Melissa, would be non-numerical data. So we call that, um, or what do we call the numerical data? The numerical data is going to be quantitative, quantitative data. Remember that um, quantitative sounds like the word quantity. If it's a quantity, it's a number. So numbers are considered quantitative data. If it's not numerical data, what is it called? Should be qualitative data. Okay, qualitative is non-numerical. No numbers in qualitative data. And then last but not least, what do you call the stuff that you don't change in an experiment? Talked about this the other day. It's in your notes for the scientific method. We went over and you filled in the blanks through my PowerPoint. So if you can, please make sure to review those and, um, and make sure you understand what a independent variable is, what a dependent variable is, and what you call the stuff that you don't change. It's always the same. It's always constant. And it's sometimes also called the control, the control. Um, because you control it, it's going to be constantly the same throughout the experiment. And again, that tells us that we know that those variables did not affect the outcome of your experiment because you made sure to leave them the same. Okay? All right. So we're about to ready to draw to a close. All I wanted to know at this point is if you have any questions. So I am going to escape back out and see if any of you have figured out the chat box and um, just see if I can help you in any way. And if anyone is left in this land. All right. I still don't see um, anyone in the chat box. And unfortunately, I don't have any way to communicate with you. Let me go back and see if there's any comments on the outer screen. Thank you again, Gracie, for telling me I look confused. I'm confused. I'm trying to help you, and that's all I want to do, so I'm sorry that that's not working. Who else do we have? Okay. Okay, I'm glad to see that you guys are adding each other. And I don't see any communication from you. Oh, 10 comments.
19 comments. I can't see you, Lyndon. If you can hear me. And thank you, Gracie, for trying. Um, I would recommend if you guys want to continue using this, thank you very much for attempting to log in. Um, if you go to YouTube and type in uh, how to use Google Hangouts, um, that might help a little bit. So try to try to go ahead and um, and do that so that next time we can be better prepared and I'll be online um, maybe sometime this weekend if you see I'm online you can go ahead and call me um, you can create your own hangout with that hangout button that I showed you I'm looking at your comments So um, I can't see anybody, I can't hear you, and um, unfortunately that's all I have. So I can go ahead and let me go in another way and try to, again, I'll go to regular Hangout. I'm going to close this Hangout if you're in there, and I'm going to add some of you in and call you and see if that helps, okay? So this Google Hangout is going to close, and then you should get a request in a couple minutes. I'll call in everybody that I added. So thank you again, and I'll be right back.